Hey guys, Brent here from Building the X Set. Today we're removing the wiring harness and getting ready to pull the body off the frame. Okay, so this video has a little more footage and there's a little more involved with removing the wiring harness and the uh, some of the other components to the car before lifting the body off. So this actually isn't going to be the video where I remove the body off the Miata. Instead, I'm going to show basically uh, how I go about removing the wiring harness, routing it all through the car, um, and uh, unbolting shock tower bolts, mo most of the stuff on the top of the car. The next video, I'm going to go into the actual unbolting of the subframe and the lifting of the body off the car. Okay, so since I've already got the car on jack stands and uh, have the body lifted up, I need to remove the top uh, strut tower mounts. Um, so I don't want to pull the whole body down again and put the tires on to compress the spring. So I do have a set of spring compressors, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to uh, load the suspension up and uh, then go to the top and I'm going to go ahead and remove the shock tower bolts just so there's uh, tension on them uh, before I release them. So the rear shock tower mounts are mounted here in the trunk, but um, the filler tank the uh, excuse me, the, the gas tank filler tube runs across here and the air release tube across here. So since you're removing this anyways, it's a lot easier just to have these out first before you go ahead and loosen these bolts. Okay, next part is going to be the exhaust system. As you can see, catalytic converter here bolts up to your downpipe, which then goes up to your header. Now those header bolts are pretty hard to reach and, and don't necessarily need to be removed. However, um, you do have some exhaust hangers back here toward the rear. Those will have to be pulled off and removed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep the exhaust with the power plant frame here um, as just removing these hangers will allow the exhaust to be free from the body. Uh, it'll still be connected to the motor, uh, but that's fine as the motor transmission all that of course is staying with the power plant frame. As you can now see, the exhaust system is completely free of the body of the car. I'm just going to let it rest uh, on this, uh, oh, this tie bar or whatever you want to call it here um, for the time being. Okay, so here is your fuel filter. Here's the line coming from the gas tank. Here's the line going to your motor. So we are going to cut the line coming out of the gas tank here. This is the actual fuel cell here. But keep in mind when you cut this line, it is going to siphon fuel out of the tank since this line is already full. So once you cut it, you need to make sure you got a bucket underneath this because uh, however full your tank is, um, you're going to get a lot of that fuel on the floor. Okay, so now on to the main wiring harness room. Of the video. Basically what I'm going to be doing is um, removing the sections that are underneath the car. Um, there is, is a few different components to the wiring harness. There is from the battery in the trunk, the main power cable that runs up to the starter and the fuse box in the uh, engine bay. That's one section that needs to be removed. Then there is basically 
one main section to the rest of the wiring harness. What it is is everything connects up underneath the driver's side of the dash um, into the fuse panel there, uh, connections into the steering column, HVAC, radio, you know, stuff like that. So that's the main bundle. But out from that main bundle, there is a part that runs to into the trunk in the passenger and driver's side of the car. So there's two arms that branch out that way. Those do um, uh, your rear brake lights, turn signals, uh, you know, things like that. And then in the front of the car, um, there's a part that goes up through the passenger footwell and the driver footwell into the engine bay. And those are, uh, one section of them is uh, the headlights, turn signals, things like that. Uh, the other section of those is hooking up to the engine components. So it's important that you remove all those first from the engine components, from the lights, tail lights, headlights, things like that. Label them so you know what that plug is. Then work on actually unrouting all the wire. So how it actually went down is everything came out into the cabin of the car. So the, the, I'd say 80% of the harness actually came out through the cabin portion of the car. Now, the part that didn't was from the battery cable to the fuse box and starter. That cable runs underneath the car. So I'll show a little bit of step-by-step -step kind of where some stuff is so you can get a better feeling of where all the sections of wiring are on the car. Okay, so I got uh, the driver's side wiring harness pulled in from uh, the hood area. This is the grommet that you can see it's a pretty darn big hole. It's actually right up there uh, behind that insulation. My suggestion would probably be to remove the pedals first. That would have been a smart idea because there would be a lot more uh, access room. Now the fuse, the interior fuse block sits here. And you can remove that, remove the bracket, and that will give you access to be able to pull these wires through. And as you can see, there are quite a few wires that come through that from the engine. Now on the um, passenger side, there is the engine bay fuse block here. And as you can see all the wires in here, I have it labeled as engine fuse box because they are very close in the harness there. So it's obvious that they will all plug in uh, where they plug in into this. So once I get these moved out of here, then I have the rest of this harness uh, already loose and labeled. That will then go through this grommet and hole here and come out the passenger side here. here you will see part of the wiring harness running along next to this rail here to the power plant, power plant frame that runs all the way back to the rear of the car there's a bunch of clips holding it in that you need to remove now smart people would buy one of those trim removal tools that are just a few bucks but if you're anything like me and like smacking the crap out of your knuckles and bleeding and having problems, you just use a screwdriver. So that's where I'm gonna head on this one. Also in front of the rear differential on the power plate frame, you'll see this ground wire that is bolted into that frame rail. That will need to be removed as part of the wiring part. Rear passenger fender well. This is where that harness that was connected to the side of the tunnel uh, goes right up top into the trunk. Rear battery terminals feed back here and exit down below the car here between the passenger rear seat and the battery box located in the trunk. So this cable goes right down through this hole here 
which also just happened to be the one that ran along the power plant frame rail on the tunnel. So um, that's where that all goes. There's actually two entry and exit points for the harnesses in the rear of the car. This is the main power, I'll call it, uh, cable with the main ground wire and positive uh, cable for the car. Those drop down through the passenger side. The tail lights, uh, you know, uh, reverse lights, everything like that, that harness is here, and that actually runs behind the driver's seat to the rear of the car. So. Uh, basically all your interior type electronics run through the driver's side, your main power engine uh, starter uh, runs run underneath the passenger, behind the passenger seat, underneath the car, and through the transmission tunnel up to the engine. Okay, so under the car here, this is the main cable coming from the rear from the battery. There are two little clips here that feed somewhere up on top of the uh, on top of where the drive line and the transmit or the yeah drive line and the transmission made up, these two plugs need to be removed as well. Also, I do not see me getting the fuse box through this gap here. So that means I'm going to be removing that end of the harness after the body is slightly separated from the subframe. So subframe here, transmission bell housing here, there's not much room to feed that all the way down through here and out. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Once the body starts lifting up a couple inches that will easily slide right out. So for some reason last night I said there was no way I was getting the fuse box and the wiring harness down and underneath and out the engine. Today at work, I was thinking about it a little bit, and I didn't understand why I thought it needed to go down that hole. It's disconnect on the other end, it can come out. Sure enough, a little finagling, I was able to pull the, uh, the main power part of the harness out um, through the top of the engine bay. Here's the fuse box, that part came out first. There's the battery terminals from the trunk. Now, as you can see, that came out. So. Okay, so wiring harness is out of the car. Um, this is the part that I was told was really going to freak me out when you see the complexity and the size of the harness. And it's definitely doing that. Um, wasn't, I'd say most of the work so far with removing the, um, this part of the removing the body has been in the wiring harness for sure. It's probably um, between labeling and um, undoing every connection and every clip and things like that. I'd say we're probably probably about four hours of work into the, just the removal of the wiring harness. Maybe maybe more with all the labeling I've had to do. But anyways, here's a, uh, here's a shot of the uh, carnage. It's actually rather impressive that all this is engineered to an exact length and all these plugs to uh, to work and fit in the car as well as it does and this is just one car they have to do these for every single car they manufacture so that's the entirety of it pretty crazy